All right, take number two here. We just had it all done, and I noticed I still had my microphone on and my headset, so the sound is terrible. Let's try this baby again. Practice makes perfect. Okay, so today I'm going to go into my first part of the series on getting more booking. So I've sat down for about a half an hour and I've just come up with as many good things that I can think of from what I've seen on other YouTube videos, from my own personal take so far, my experience, and I've come up with 40 already. So today I'm just gonna go into the first H. We're gonna break this into a five part series and hopefully this will help you. It has helped me immensely in the last little bit from stuff that you have done as well as what I've sort of seen firsthand. Let's get right into her. Tip number one, put your teaching style in your bio. I just started doing this about a month ago and I've seen a good uptake in my bookings because of it. So what I mean by that is I kept getting comments back, five Apple feedback that I'm good at scaffolding. And up to be quite honest, when I first started, I remember seeing in the notes, SD and SU, and I had no idea what the heck is SD and SU. I had no idea. It probably was a month in before I knew SD meant scaffold down and SU meant scaffold up. So I didn't know even then at that point, okay, scaffold. What does scaffolding mean? I, To be quite honest, again, I kept thinking back to Scofflaw, to Seinfeld, to that with the patch, eye patch. That's what I kept thinking back to. Anyways, we had to do a little bit of research. Like I said, I'm not always the smartest person, but I'll figure things out. So scaffolding basically means that you bring the child up. If they aren't where they need to be, you build steps and you climb that mountain to get them up to where they need to be. You customize your class to that child's needs. So if they are excelling, you push them even further to excel even more, that X plus one level. Really hone in on this and put that in your profile. Now, if you don't do that, then don't put it in there, don't lie to them, but say in your profile that you customize your class if you do that. They need to know that. They need to know that you're not just reading from the slides, that you're able to run with the child whichever way they need to go. If they need more help, you give them more help. If you need to push them, you push them further. So say that you customize your class to the child's needs. I think that will help your bookings. Number two, speak slowly. <laughs> I got a few comments back early on saying I speak too fast. They would still leave me five Apple, God love them, but they would say for the level ones, bring down your, your level of speech in terms of your pace a little bit. And I really appreciate that because that was good constructive feedback that I needed to hear. And what I've, what I've done to help me slow down for those lower levels is I use my fingers. This forces me to slow my speech down. So try and do that. They may not even tell you that you're speaking too fast, but they'll just leave and you won't figure it out unless some parent is nice enough to let you know that way in a good constructive way. Number three, get to know the kid. So I know this is difficult for your level ones, but for your level twos, threes and fours and higher, you should be able to find something out about them. What sports they like? What instruments they play? What do they like to do on the weekends? What do they like to eat? Something that you can take back and put on their profile so that you have something to refer back to next class and say, how was piano on Wednesday or whatever the case may be. By doing that and bringing it up in the next class or two, they know that you're listening. They know that they are important to you. So it's just going to help them keep rebooking because they can see that you're taking an interest in them. And genuinely just do it. Don't just do it because it's going to get them rebooked. Do it because you do care. Also, there's a spot where you can put a nickname. I didn't realize this until a couple months ago. Give them a nickname. So if they like piano, put Piano Eric or something so that it pops up on your schedule and you know who you're going to be talking to. And it's top of mind to bring something up like that up next time you see them. Okay, number four. Now, I don't like being negative, but 
don't play tic-tac-toe in class. I've never done this. I just think that it's, it does not look good from the parents. Now, some parents probably don't care, but I know there are some that do. And the only reason why I think this is important is because they're paying such big money and to be playing tic-tac-toe, unless it's in the lesson itself, which it is in, a, in one or two of them, don't play tic-tac-toe for extra time. Do anything else to extend. I know we're done fast sometimes, but find anything else. Do not play tic-tac-toe. It's it just it can't do anything positive. It will at best hold you there, hold the booking maybe, but just don't play tic-tac-toe. My opinion, sorry if I'm offending you, but that's my opinion. Number five, sound effects. So I like doing this, and again, it's just being silly. Come up with some sound effects that you can do in class that just make them laugh. So I like the, you know, the crash and burn, or different things like that, that they can just laugh. Anything you can do to make them laugh, bring back down the overall tension level or just the anxiety of being in class with a foreign teacher, anything you can do to build rapport like that, I like the sound effects. So whatever sound effects that you're doing in the lesson or something that's applicable, just do it. They will love it. Number six, change your tags every 30 days. Now, I don't want you to lie and say something you're not, but change your tags. Go back and look at the parent feedback that you've gotten in your, in your five Apple feedback. They leave you tags. Look at what comes back over and over. It may not be what you think. I went back and looked at mine, and that's where I saw scaffolding coming back all the time. And I'm like, how do the parents even know what this is? I didn't know what scaffolding is, but obviously they do because they keep throwing it back at me. And so I updated my tag to start putting that. And my theory behind this is if you keep your tags always the same, you're going to be catching the same fish. If you go and change your tags periodically, you're going to widen your nest because you're going to tap into a different audience. So I think that'll help your bookings. And I don't want you to do it if you're lying. If you're terrible at grammar, don't say you're good at grammar. But if you're good at it, then put it in there because that's one of many things I think that the parents are looking for. Number, uh, number seven, wide net on the same thing theme of wide nest. I if I could go back and start all over again, I would have started working nights early on. So, I would have stayed up though that Friday and Saturday nights when you can work the nights. Now, I know with coronavirus things are all out of whack here right now with nights and whatnot, but your typical work week of Friday and Saturday nights, I would have worked nights in uh, during that time. That would have helped me ramp up so much faster because I would have cast my net to catch a lot of fish then bring them into my schedule and stop working nights. Really what I would have done, and I wish I would have done, for the first month, I would have worked nights on the Friday and Saturday nights. I would have pulled all-nighters, slept during the days or whatever, and just to help build my student base a lot faster early on. So that's something, if you're struggling with bookings, that is a good way, I think, to build up your base. Last one for today, number eight. This is something I just started doing in the last couple of weeks, and it has been such gold. I really like showing them my notes at the end of class. Now, I don't show them the negative. I cover that up. I don't show the stuff they can work on. I put that in the feedback. That's not to tell them at the end of class. You want to leave on a high note, and what I do, I used to just tell them. I used to tell them what they're doing well. But it does not have the same impact as showing them. When you show them, and look, I cover the negative. I show them exactly what they're doing well. And my handwriting's terrible, so I literally just read them one by one on some notes that I've taken. And shows them that you're paying attention and that you care and that they're encouraged to see. They light it like their smile on their face when I show them this is just excellent. I love seeing it. They love seeing it. It's just a great way to end class on. It helps them want to come back to you. And it's just been gold for me to do. It just does not have the same impact when you just tell them. When you show them that you've taken notes and that you've specifically made note of it, it, may, it means the world to them. So 
Hopefully that helps you. Subscribe to my channel. Come back for some more. I'm going to go into at least four more videos on this in the next few days. And hopefully that helps. Share some things that works good for you. And like I